Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions in the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. As always, I'm your host, Peter Ramoliotis, and on Twitter I go as PD Beats. And I have a pretty special guest. I'm pretty excited for this. I have a contestant. He was uh, third place on season uh, 12 of The Bachelorette on ABC. We're with uh, Chase McNary. Chase, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up, PD Beats? <laughs> not much, man. Not much. Uh, so, yeah, I, I see basically on uh, social media, uh, you're, you're, you're pretty busy, you know, doing a bunch of stuff post-Bachelorette. Uh, what else specifically have you been up to? Yeah, yeah. Um... You know, post bachelorette, it's definitely it's it's taken a little bit to figure out the exact path that I want to walk down. But for the most part, it's just been about kind of being an entrepreneur, starting two different companies. I've got Leisureletics is my female athletic apparel line. Um, I'm in that with a couple of business partners, and then my kind of main focus right now is actually my online fitness coaching and personal training, Left Side Lion. Um, doing you know some of those 30 day challenges and then. They've been going fantastic. Got another one starting November first. Mm, well, it's a good. It's it's definitely. I mean, it's a bit of a double edged sword now being an entrepreneur in the digital media age because there's all these opportunities, but at the same time, there's more competition, right? So there's more saturation. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely. You know, it is. It is a saturated market out there, specifically the fitness realm online. Oh man, that's huge. There's so much stuff out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel at all. I'm just, you know, somehow I've kind of stumbled into it. Um, you know, I was able to, to land the cover of that fitness magazine, which kind of helped launch a lot of my stuff. Congrats um, on that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. That was big. It was huge. Definitely exciting. And then, you know, I'm just trying to, trying to get out and help, help people for the most part. Mm -hmm. How did that, how did that come to be? How did that fitness uh, cover, how did that happen? Um, so, you know, I started rolling with. My company left side line early on, getting some ideas, starting to build the the uh, you know the whole infrastructure, and then was in conversation with a few guys over at NutriShop, um, and then I've got a management team, and they kind of helped me with that discussion, and then they do a, a monthly magazine, or I think it might be you know every three months or something, but they just decided to do a shoot with me, and actually a, a, a female was supposed to have the cover. They've always had a female on the cover of that magazine. And then after my shoot, they decided to put me as the first male cover of the magazine. That's, so that's awesome. That's groundbreaking, man. Yeah, you know, just kind of the shoot, the storyline, and and the newness of me in the industry. I think is what what led them to put me on the cover instead of the girl. Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. And talk a little bit about how it came to be you being on the bachelorette i mean you know we all we we know that there's kind of like a um audition process but like what made you kind of want to go on a show like that yeah so you know before the show i was doing medical device sales more specifically i was just selling spinal implants in denver my territory was 45 minutes from where i lived so i was, I was commuting quite a bit and one day i was on the way home from work and one of my good buddies he's married kind of called me and was like hey man the bachelor casting calls in Denver tonight, you should go. <laughs> and no joke, I've never really watched the show. Didn't really, I was kind of laughed at his face and was like, yeah, we're right. And no, I'm not doing that. And then totally unsolicited. Another good buddy of mine called, um, and told me the exact same thing. And they're two different groups of friends. And I was like, what, is this like a big deal? What's going on? And then one of my really good buddies, uh, texted me. It was like, Hey man, I live right next to where they're doing the casting call. It's, uh, let's get some beers and some shots and go check this thing out. And I was like, all right, whatever. So yeah, I ended up going, having a few beers, having a few shots and, uh, just kind of stumbled into that casting call and said the right things to the right person Met the senior casting producer, she told me to stay single through September, <laughs> which I did. Uh, and then, you know, one thing led to another. Then they flew me out to finalist weekend where they do, the, you know, all the testing, the drug testing, STD testing, psychology testing, lock you in a hotel room for three days. A lot of tests. Yeah, blood test, all that stuff. And, and you know, after that, then they make you wait a couple of weeks and then call you and say, pack your bags. Yeah. No, it's 
It's crazy. I mean, I remember when JJ Lane um, came on the show for Caitlyn's season. Um, he came on, and we've also had like Clint Arliss has come on, and Ben Zorn as well. And I think what's really interesting is JJ talked about how there was all this like food in the background, like at the house and everything, but you couldn't eat it. It was just kind of sitting there, and it was that was kind of like one of the hardest things. Was he talking about first night or like when you go on dates? Like for like first night or when they're shooting, when there's like you know like well, the, do, the house. They they bring in a catering company that that caters that that whole first night. So you know that whole yeah. first night, it's pretty well known that that thing goes all night long. Yeah, like you get out of the limo at sunset, and then no joke, we got back in the party bus to go back to the hotel. She stayed in the hotel for the first night, and the sun was rising, and nobody had slept. And you drink all night, and you eat you, you, you eat snacks. I mean, it's not like meals, but they have deli meat. I don't know. It was stuff. a while ago. He's I don't know. He said something. I don't know. Someone asked because we used to do the show live, and we had like people asking questions. And I have to go back, but it was something about food, or if you like, yeah. they didn't let you eat food probably, because like it would mess up the mic or something. I don't know. They were probably talking about the food on the dates and the one on ones. So you always you go on a on a dinner date, and Every single scene, all the food, all the plates are just fully, perfectly set. <laughs> and they, they pretty much tell you not to. So they, actually, they feed you before you go on the date. So, you're, one, you're not really hungry. But what if it's, like, really good, though? Like, was there a situation? I, well, I was good. As soon as, like, things kind of <laughs> as as pop was over, I at least gave it a bite. I gave it – I gave – I tried every one of the dinners in front of me. Most of the time, the food was cold by the end of the night. But... <laughs> Do you, did you find – did you kind of find the – like, I mean – like you say, you didn't have that much of a, you didn't know much about the show. Like you didn't watch the show before, but like, did you, when you're doing this show and like all of you guys are kind of competing, um, for Jojo, did you kind of like, and when you go on your separate dates with her, did it ever come to your mind? Like, Oh, this is kind of, this is weird. Like there's, this is like, you went to like, did that ever come to your mind? Like, it's not like the average kind of situation in terms of yeah. finding love. It's a game show. Yeah, right? I'm, a, I'm a pretty reasonable guy. Um, and I, I can tell through the entire process that it's it's not organic. I mean, it's not how you're actually <laughs> going to meet somebody and get to know somebody in the best ways possible. But it kind of does, in a way, force you to try and at least it forces you to ask the tough question, questions earlier on than you would in a real relationship. Yeah. And that's how I think real emotions can grow quicker than in, in real life. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, like I said, third place. I mean, it was... And and the set, the runner up Robbie, you said you your roommates right now, right? Yeah, yeah, Robbie and I, yep, one in, or two and three, um, yeah. Since the show, I mean, we just <laughs> had this like our similar path has, has crossed, and we just decided to to move in together. He actually moved in with me in Denver, and then we moved out here to LA there soon after. Um, and we've just kind of been motoring along and, and keeping this wave alive. But you see it on social media. I mean, even from like past seasons, like there's a lot of inter interaction between contestants. I mean, I don't think that bond's kind of ever going away. I mean, even if it's not like everyone on the season, I'm sure there's like seven or eight contestants, Chase, that you're like keeping in touch with on, you know, maybe like a weekly or monthly basis. Yeah. It, you know, being from The Bachelor, especially in the, in the latter parts of the show, you kind of fall into this tight family of some of people who have been through an experience that's really hard to to describe or to communicate unless you've been through it so all of us have kind of been through that same scenario we can kind of closely to relate and then even more so than what you do on the show and feel and experience on the show everything that happens to you after the show kind of this overnight celebrity persona that you get thrown into and most of the time you're still just a regular guy so that's why we all kind of stay close to each other and, and are able to communicate. So I find it interesting too, because I've asked some people that have had a big brother this, but I've never asked a bachelorette contestant this, but okay. Do you think that there are, I mean, I, I don't know. I think the answer to this question is yeah, obviously, but I mean, there's a lot of people that like, like yourself, you go on the show and then boom, you have like a huge social media following and you didn't even win the show. You're third yeah. place and you have like a lot of followers. And yeah. Do you think that that's kind of something that they'll weed out now in casting? Like, people that just want to go on it only to, like, to, you know, make a name for themselves and make a brand for themselves? Because you become a brand after you're on that show. Like, it's there. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Um, you know, I, I think that's it's difficult to weed out because it's inevitably going to happen. Just, yeah. just the reach of the show, it's inevitably going to happen. I think they do try and screen and look for people that are actually looking for love or relationships so they can get that organic that organicness on the show and, and actually have successful relationships because there's not too many successful relationships coming off the show and everybody knows that. But, you know, the, the social media aspect just comes with it. And, it, and it's only – escalating if you could look at even some of the guys from the most recent season of bachelorette like number four dean um he was on paradise but his social media has just exploded you know and so much of that is is regulated by engagement and followers and all that stuff so mm -hmm. inside of all of us too we kind of look at like who has the most followers who's gets the best engagement who does bachelor nation really love the most and i know that the franchise even looks at that stuff too for Shows later on down the road. Mm -hmm. You haven't done a Bachelor in Paradise, eh? No, I uh, yeah. Are I they a, were you like asked? Yeah, I was. I was asked. We were in discussions about it. Then some of that other, you know, that drama unfolded with Corinne. Yeah. Um, you know this the suspension of the show, and and so just in lieu of all of that, um, I kind of stayed out, focused on myself, my career, and, mm -hmm. and these two, two business ventures I have going on. Yeah, it doesn't really end. I mean, you go a bachelorette and then boom, you know, you, there's like you kind of do it all over again with Bachelor in Paradise. I think they kind of have that formula down pack now where yeah. it's almost like a recycling of you yeah. know, new romances, old romances, and kind of it's just it's crazy. Like they're finding so many ways to make new content. It's crazy. They are. They are. And they got that Bachelor Winter Games coming up soon. Oh, wow. What What is that all about? Um, That's... There, it's another kind of spinoff, like a hybrid of Bachelor Pad, Bachelor Paradise. It, apparently, it's going to be, uh, you know, like winter Olympic competitions as well as dating. Quick yeah. film, so similar to Paradise in that sense. But I know they're bringing contestants from international Bachelor shows. So it's, you know, going to bring a whole new breed of life back to the show, I guess. So we'll see what happens. No, it's good. I remember when I had Ben Zorn on, he actually said that he was actually asked to be like the bachelor on one, on one season, but he said he was too young to get married. So really? I'm wondering if you ever had the opportunity one day to be like the bachelor, do you think you'd go for it? Um, so I did they actually, and this is, this is out there, but yeah, they, uh, they, they approached me and Luke both after our season about being the bachelor, you know, I went through negotiations, contracts and all that stuff. Huh. Uh, with this franchise, I've kind of learned that nothing's set in stone until it's done. So I didn't hear anything about that. Is that like online and stuff? Yeah, it's out there. I've, I've said it in a few interviews. Right. Um, but I think they got kind of mad at me for being that open about it. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Luke did it too. But yeah, they, you know, they talked to me about being a bachelor, and I, I did agree to it. You know, I talked to my friends and family, and I said I would, I would do it. I would do it the best I could. Um, and then they called and said that they decided to go with someone else, and they ended up going with Nick. Ah. Oh. So, and that was, you know. So I didn't uh, the Ben Higgins season, apparently Ben Zorn was in works for that one too. Yeah, yeah. Ben, he was here in my house actually a few weeks ago, and, and kind of gave me the lowdown on that too. But yeah, you know, they, they always they have to keep a handful of people in line just in case something else goes wrong. So, I mean, do you think the door is closed? Like, do you think like you can never be the bachelor? Um, I don't think it's closed. I mean, if, if they approached me again about it, I would definitely seriously consider it. Oh. Uh, I think, you know, now that they're going reaching back into the, the history books again and pulled out Ari just shows, you know, they're, they're trying to, I don't know. I don't know if they don't like, that a lot of the guys are current contestants for that role, for that position, but... Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely look... I mean, uh, you had... But I find it interesting, because I do follow social media, I do see it, and it just seemed like the Bachelor season that had Ben Higgins on had more of kind of like a hype than the one that had Nick on. I don't know if that's just yeah. me, but like, I, I, I don't know if... It, it just seemed like there was a lot of hype around Ben's episode, Ben's season... Yeah. And then Nick's season was was just kind of there type I thing. I don't know. I think that, that might have been kind of a result of everyone being sick of Nick. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. 
I mean, was, but Ben well, Ben Ben Higgins, I read about it. Like his season was probably one of the most like what like there were some episodes that did like really well. Like it was a very yeah. popular season. Yeah. And you know, that's Ben is a legit serious guy and he was legit looking for, for love. And I think that's what people wanted to see. And your season was pretty like with JoJo, like that was a pretty big that was a pretty popular um season. I mean, it might or might not have to do with the fact that the winners like brother is like one of the best quarterbacks ever but i mean that how did you feel about that like, when did you find out about that like when did you find out that like he was going to be on the show did you find out right away or like where you got that no I, yeah we actually i found that out before i mean that was kind of released before i even flew out for filming well, you know I even, what I were you heard. what did people think about that like was there chatter in the house like why wow, like this is kind of weird like, no it was released like before any of us got into the house. No, I know, but like when you were like chatting with some of the other guys, like, what, what did people think about having Jordan in, like Jordan around, knowing that? Kind yeah, of, kind we of, all knew that there was a slight advantage there, but <laughs> I like Jordan. I like Jordan Rogers a lot. I think he's a he's a no. He's all, no, I, I he, I've seen a lot some interviews yeah. he's done. He's a really good guy. Yeah, and you know he he wasn't transferring the house bragging about him or his brother by any means. So no, I. It was, I I got those vibes for sure. We all knew, he knew, JoJo knew that his brother is the best, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Especially after last week. Yeah. So it was just kind of one of those like lingering side effects that you can't do anything about. No, absolutely. And I I remember there was that episode. I think, what was that episode where like, like JoJo went to Jordan's for like a dinner? Yeah, and he was supposed to be there, Aaron, but he wasn't. I have, a, I have an inkling that the show kind of played that up quite a bit. Uh, I I agree. I feel like that could have happened. They left the empty chairs there, and like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I, it would have been cool if they did something. I mean, do you? Because uh, you, like I said, you've been kind of like a, an entrepreneur for a while like in sales for a while do you think that the show kind of reflected your background enough or do you think they could have done a better um way of kind of maybe promoting the fact that you know you have all that experience as you know an entrepreneur and that you were that kind of outgoing guy do you think the show did you justice in terms of who chase mcnary actually is um you know i think i kind of got buried as far as my personality and all that stuff goes especially early on you know, they, they kind of made me the dark horse. Obviously, they knew how I ended up. So more of my self came out later on. But, you know, th- there was definitely a shyness to me on the show that I don't have anymore. And that's, that's also kind of just getting in, used to the environment of filming, cameras being around you all the time, always being on the microphone. Um, you know, and then as far as the, the professional world goes, there's not – there wasn't a whole lot to talk about as far as medical device sales goes. And that's what I was – pretty deep in doing right before the show and even after the show. Went back yeah, but, work. you know, they have all the they have the contestants on and, like, you know, on dates, you know, like, she wants to know about you and, like, your, yeah. like, aspirations. And, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of like your social media um, presence kind of screams out kind of that you're really involved in a lot of different, you know, projects and a lot of that. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that shows will kind of, I mean, there's only so much time and so many things they could show, right, Chase? But it's just like I'm hoping shows can kind of let us know a bit more about, you know, the the, the backstories of contestants. Yeah, yeah, and that's true. And, you know, I, I think a lot of it comes down to that they have to pick and choose the storylines and which ones are going to be most interesting and also kind of develop each person's character throughout the season. And they And they do a little bit of that, you know, they can't. They can't show every single piece of you because they just don't have enough time. So now knowing that too, it's like you've got to give them everything you can all the time or you're going to get kind of buried in the, in the boringness. You know, I can't tell you how many times I got called boring. Chase, <laughs> boring? Really? Yeah. I mean, so, that. yeah. I mean, but you could have said the same thing about, I mean, maybe not, maybe not Robbie, but like, I mean... Sure. Like there was the top, like all three of you were kind of like more calm guys, right? You weren't like crazy yeah. guys. Yeah, no, no, we're we're definitely aren't. We're not aggressive guys, and I think that that's something that they saw in previous seasons. You know, we weren't all very aggressive towards each other. We we're all kind of like, you know, we'd sit back and watch each other's moves, 
see how it went and then kind of make our move with JoJo. Not we weren't like Nick and Sean where we wanted to rip each other's heads off. Yeah, no, that <laughs> that's very true. And I actually have a bit of a curveball question for you right now. It's a it's a good question. I just thought of. Um, <laughs> actually, I get chirped a lot because when I say it's a good question, like I ask my guests, it's a good question. They're like, wait a second, I should deem whether it's a good question or not. So. <laughs> Sorry about that. I do that all the time. But, um, okay. You, Ben Zorn, JJ, Robbie, all these guys, Ben, like, you're all, like, um, into fitness. You're all guys that, you know, some of you did modeling in the past. A lot of you kind of um, are really into fitness and well and, and health and wellness and a lot of that. And you see that a lot in the casting, right? Yeah. I think it's it's getting a little saturated a little bit where there's a lot of them, right? Like, every episode, like every season, it's most of the guys. Do you think that there's ever a situation where they're going to kind of shy away from that and kind of maybe look for people that are doing other things rather than just like fitness and modeling and all that. Cause you see half the contestants, like they have a, they were personal trainers. They were models. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Chase. <laughs> uh, I think they, I think they do. I mean, they do cast people of all types, you know, and they, they, cause they cast, you know, my season, there was 26 guys. I think that's just a result of the top people, the top, you know, the top finishers usually fall in line in that category. And that, I, I mean, you can kind of figure out what that means. But, you know, you got like, like well, pretty well, and he's not an athlete. He's not a model. Um, but you know yeah. what I mean, though, right? Like, they kind of like, there's, you said there's a lot of guys, but it just seems like there's kind of an emphasis on guys involved with like fitness or modeling yeah. or like every second sh like Instagram photo has no shirt on. Yeah. Like it's just, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're yeah. like, you're like gu guilty as charged or like charged to those. And even more so after the show than before the show. And that's, you know, that's just, if you look at what bachelor nation is, you know, it's, that's what it I, is. I mean, my, my, Instagram insights are 18 to 34 year olds. I have 95 percent females that follow me. My highest city is New York, and then it's like LA and then Denver. So, yeah. what am I going to post to entertain the girls? Most of the girls that follow me, it's going to be kind of the fitness. Yeah, you got a lot of you got a lot of followers on there. You're over 300k. Yeah, my my dog. I, I made an Instagram account for my dog. And he has 163,000 followers. So that's he's, impressive for a dog. Yeah, he's not uh, he's not Chase McNary, but he's he's up there. Hey, that's that's organic growth on the dog, though. You know, it really was. I mean, we, you know, it really was organic. I mean, we didn't have kind of he wasn't on like the Bachelorette or anything where right. it skyrocketed. But I think, but I think it's interesting because it's one thing like you're the Bachelorette is a door, right? Like they're open like a door is open for Chase McNary, right? So it's mm -hmm. open, you know, this door is full of kind of opportunity, you know, being more in the public eye, a big social media presence. But then it's it's up to Chase to kind of walk into that door and kind of take take it like kind of, you know, um, take all the advantages he can and make it's it's what you make out of it, right? If you're gonna yeah. kind of not treated properly, take advantage of it. I mean, it's kind of, kind of, it's not going to be as effective as it could have been. Right. And no, and that's, as soon as they're done filming, I mean, you're under a contract, but they are 100% hands off on, on what you do. I mean, if you do something that's liable to the show, they're going to give you a cease and desist order, which they don't do too many times. But what you do with your, your with your following and everything that you, that you get after the show with your platform is, is 100% up to you and, and you that's why you can kind of look at each one of us and see who's done it different who's done it better and who's done it the worst uh -huh. um, you know and that's it's kind of interesting to see and, and to be honest for me it, it it took a while to actually figure out which way I wanted to go with it because there's yeah. so much thrown at you you know you get these brands and sponsorships looking at you that are throwing cash in your face to post things and for a while, I held out because I didn't want to be a sellout. But then, you know, at but one I mean, point, you gotta you gotta eat, right? You know, and there's still some of those brands that I just won't do, like the teeth whitening, skinny tees, stuff that I don't actually <laughs> call if I try to stay away from. But you know, there's other influencers or people. But not. I I think it's also hard too. I mean, we'll wrap up soon. But also, 
you know, there's a difference between companies actually like saying like, hey, like here's some product, post about it. And then there's a lot of companies that actually pay you per post. But I think it's, and then, you know, people, a lot of people try to build up their following because then they kind of have, they have like a commission-based deal with the product where like there's yeah. like, pro, like promo codes and all that. But, you know, I don't know, man. I mean, I honestly think my, my stance on this is, impressions is like the most important thing and you have to have as many impressions on a post as much as possible and yeah. because it can lead to more clicks and, and the the return like the um roi might like the return investment might not be like right away like oh yeah the return investment if you have chase canary post for you is like you know two hundred thousand dollars but the return on investment is like that one post is gonna get like over three hundred thousand impressions over right. like, you know what i mean that that's like that's good. And like, you know, you look at it and like, let's say 10% or 5% of that, um, of those people click the post. That's a small engagement rate, percentage of click rate, but that's pretty good. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is, and this is something that the learning curve hit me pretty hard, but being able to create quality content, even when it does come down to the advertising posts, it's not easy. It's not, you know, it's definitely difficult. You got to have a almost a little bit of a team behind you to kind of help create some of those right things and having that team with you consistently can get expensive, but it can also bring you better endorsement deals and better products. If you can post quality stuff that do get a lot of those impressions and a lot of those clicks. Yeah. I mean, you, it, it's a whole different, uh, different world out there mm -hmm. and it's how you, it's how you go with it, right? It's like who you yeah. have on the team, but Chase, this has been awesome. Thank you so much, man, for coming on the show. Yeah, and no, for sure. And yeah, no, I, like I said, gotta get your, gotta get Robbie on the show soon. Yeah. Get Robbie. I'll, I can, uh, I'll shoot him a note and then <laughs> anyone listening to my, my November challenge, my 30 day challenge starts November 1st. My second one, the first one went fantastically had over almost 200 girls or a couple guys sign up too. And they just loved it. Raven reviews on my website, leftsideline.com. So yeah, I'll put all the information in the, uh, on the website and the, uh, youtube description as well that'd be awesome. great well chase thank you so much this has been pop turnative you can catch previous episodes of pop turnative on our youtube or on our website pop uh we hope you enjoy this interview until next time this is uh chase and pd beats signing off enjoy the rest of the week thank you for tuning in to pop turnative make sure to check out our past episodes of pop turnative on youtube be sure to like pop turnative on facebook and follow us on twitter